With so many characters, there's more than enough comedy to go around. That's why I need a new apartment. I'm sorry, what was the question again? Do you have any pets? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ensemble live action TV comedy casts. You never kissed in front of anybody? Yeah, I'm sure we have. For this list, we're taking a look at live action TV series with the best casts and characters. All right, some of you were campers here last year, but now you're all 16 or 17 years old. So do not think that being a counselor means that you are campers with drinking privileges. We're solely focusing on shows with storylines that are distributed evenly between multiple characters. We've thus excluded 30 Rock, because as great as the supporting players are, almost every episode is Liz Lemon-centric. What, are you gonna guess my weight now? You don't want me to do that. We've also left off animated shows, because we already have a list for cartoon casts. You're nervous. I've been stress eating for four days. Look at me. Number 10. Cheers. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Cheers gave us some of the most iconic characters in all sitcoms. From Sam the Bartender to hot tempered waitress Carla to sad sack regular Norm. Afternoon, everybody. Norm! Even when major characters like Diane and Coach exited the series, the creators introduced welcome new additions like Rebecca and Woody. Can I help you? That went right over my head. <laughs> One of the show's breakout characters would notably go on to get his own successful ensemble-driven spin-off. However, of all the memorable characters, one of the most notable was Cheers, the bar itself, which acted as a unifying safe haven for a diverse group of people to escape the outside world. Here's to the best screaming Viking in town. Thank you. <laughs> Number nine, MASH. War is in hell. War is war and hell is hell, and of the two, war is a lot worse. TV shows inspired by movies almost never succeed, especially when the original cast is completely replaced. Or well, maybe those are the replacements. MASH proved to be the exception to this rule, arguably surpassing Robert Altman's 1970 Best Picture nominee. Much of the show's success had to do with its exceptional ensemble, with Alan Alda in particular making the role of Hawkeye his own. We try to play par surgery on this course. Par is a live patient. Despite their grim setting, the cast of MASH managed to overcome hard times with humor. Throw away all the guns and invite all the jokers from the north and the south in here to a cocktail party. They not only made us laugh, but reminded audiences that laughter is essential to getting through life. We did it again. Screwed up in reverse. I keep telling you, we gotta give up this preoccupation with keeping people alive or we'll never get out of here. Number 8. Community. You've just stopped being a study group. You have become something unstoppable. I hereby pronounce you a community. Community is one of those shows where it's impossible to single out your absolute favorite character. Everybody from the quirky Abed to the eccentric Troy to the overly determined Annie has his or her own individual moments to shine. Well, guess what, handsome hobo? Your gravy train's leaving the station. Chuck, chuck. Much like The Breakfast Club, however, this assorted group of misfits is at their finest when banded together. Even the Dean gets in on the laughs and mayhem. Please no one eat out of it until you clean the nozzles. The janitor knows how. New students and teachers would join Greendale over the years, but they all fit in perfectly and instantly became part of the family. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> Number 7. The Golden Girls Thank you for being a friend. Before there was Sex in the City or Girls, there was The Golden Girls. This sitcom further proved that women could not only be funny, but that a cast chiefly consisting of women could work. It's very good. It reduces puffiness. Does it work on thighs? B. Arthur, Betty White, Rue McClanahan, and Estelle Getty had all given great performances in the past and would go on to do great work in other projects. However, we'll always remember them best for playing these four ladies. I just never, never had two better friends. I just can't stand the thought of leaving you. Each of them would take home an Emmy for the Golden Girls, demonstrating the true strength of this ensemble. Just cut the crap and get back the damn bed. Number six, Arrested Development. Heart attack never stopped old Big Bear. I didn't even know we were calling him Big Bear. <laughs> we never had a chance to. 
If you think your family has issues, get a load of the Bluths. Comprised of an alcoholic mother, an incarcerated father, a wannabe magician, a spoiled rich woman, a flamboyant analropist, a hook-handed mama's boy, a young man in love with his cousin, and the one son who had no choice but to keep them all together, they're as dysfunctional and hilarious as families get. I feel like I covered that. So when a fourth season was announced seven years after its cancellation by Fox in 2006, you can bet there were many fans on board for the series revival. I wanted you to forget what happened at that magic club. I was embarrassed. Number 5. Parks and Recreation This is where the rubber of government meets the road of actual human beings. Although many initially wrote it off as just another workplace mockumentary, Parks and Recreation evolved into something truly special as characters like Leslie Nope, April Ludgate, and Ron Swanson came into their own. You've accidentally given me the food that my food eats. This ensemble piece only got better with the expanded roles of supporting players like Andy, Donna, and Jerry, Larry, Terry, Gary. Then, when Ben Wyatt entered the picture at the end of season two, this show was finally complete. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. Audiences grew to love all these people over seven seasons, and each got a fitting farewell in a pitch-perfect series finale. You ready, babe? Yes. Number four, Modern Family. I don't always make great decisions under pressure. What the hell is that? An alpaca, I got the last one. In this day and age, the idea of a traditional American family is becoming less commonplace. Some families consist of two men raising an Asian baby. We had initially asked one of our lesbian friends to be a surrogate. Then we figured, they're already mean enough, can you imagine one of them pregnant? Oh, yeah, yeah. No thank you, Nick. Other families consist of a breathtaking Colombian woman raising her precocious son with her much older new husband. I am Gloria Pritchett, Manny's mother. Oh, and this must be your dad. Her dad? Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's funny. Actually, no, I'm her husband. Even more traditional nuclear families like the Dunphy clan are far from old-fashioned. Hang on a second. You're 15 and it's the first time you've had a boy over. I mean, I'm bound to be a little surprised, but I'm not gonna embarrass you. I better go charge the camcorder. <laughs> the blended cast of Modern Family demonstrates just how far we've come as a society. Diversity is becoming the new norm, and this wonderful ensemble is a true testament to that. We're from different worlds, yet we somehow fit together. Number three, Seinfeld. You know in your mind that they had to have sex at least once to have you. But you still kind of maintain the image in your head that, well, I don't know, I'm not positive, I can't prove it. Although the title of this show was Seinfeld, Jerry was probably only the fourth reason why we watched this immortal sitcom. All together. Oh, like, oh, oh give me yeah, a break. right. <laughs> Elaine's overzealous passion, Kramer's harebrained schemes, George's inability to keep his mouth shut, and the way their stories always came together is what made Seinfeld ultimately work. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Having unforgettable recurring characters like Newman, Jay Peterman, and Frank Costanza didn't hurt either. Serenity now! You know that a show is timeless when a one-shot character like the Soup Nazi becomes a TV icon that people still quote to this day. No soup for you! <laughs> Number two, The Office. Damn it! Damn. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. Judges in session, what is the problem here? You put my stuff in jello again! There's no denying that the original British version of The Office was revolutionary television. What upsets me about the job? Um, wasted talent. Nevertheless, it was the American version that really stretched the possibilities of this franchise on an ensemble level. I'm sorry that you're both morons. We could always count on Michael Scott's inept management and Dwight Schrute's insane antics to make us laugh. As Jim and Pam fell in love with each other, we fell in love with them. You look terrible. So beautiful. Most impressive of all, The Office made stars out of the entire Dunder Mifflin staff. Kevin, Stanley, Kelly, Toby, we'll never forget them. I'm happy that this was all filmed so I can remember everyone and what we did. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Porn? I wish it was porn, it would be less embarrassing. I know. How about I sing you a song? It's a one way to handle it. Attention! I know you two plan on getting married in a big fancy wedding. 
But when you're in love, it doesn't matter where or how these things happen. It just matters that you have each other. One day, man. Oh. You know, you really should get down on your knees, David. <laughs> and thank us, because a lot of people would not be this cool. Number one, friends. On paper, watching a group of 20-somethings drink coffee and talk about relationships might not sound compelling. There's nothing to tell. It's just some guy I work with. Come on, you're going out with the guy. There's got to be something wrong with him. Audiences became wrapped up in the lives of Rachel, Joey, Monica, Chandler, Phoebe, and Ross, though, solely based on the strength of their individual personalities and rapport with one another. They're so cute. Oh now, what, what, what kinds are they? are they? No matter the situation or conversation, these people always had our attention. Oh, hey, you guys. Ugly naked guys putting stuff in boxes. It feels like every ensemble sitcom since has been trying to be the next friends, but none has quite topped the comedic chemistry, timing, and bond these six shared. Okay, should we get some coffee? Sure. Where? <laughs> Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite TV comedy cast? <laughs> For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Adios, muchacho. <laughs>